Totally, we were not in good terms with my mom, mm -hmm. not at all. And what was the reason? Like, you know, I usually say, and after today, and I usually tell people, mm. and I do repeat this to any media that I go, mm. I usually say this with a very big respect to this lady. Mm -hmm. But my mom hated me so much for who I was. Because she couldn't clearly say that, you know, <laughs> what's your purpose in this world? Like, what's your purpose? Your sister is a normal girl, your sister will even, make, will even give me grandchildren, but you, complicated creature. <laughs> so, so, you know, when, when I just did my KCP, it was hard to stay near her. Mm -hmm. Hello my viewer, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you're watching us from. This is your one and only host, Martha Soipan, and welcome back. And today I have visited the other side of Kasarani County, somewhere called Kamulu. I'm so humble, I'm so happy that today I've met a, uh, I'll call him a gentleman now because of the Lord's doing and uh, he has gone through a lot, a lot. When I say he, I know most of you maybe have seen him because the first time you saw him, he was a her and she was Betty. And I will not call her Betty. She has now a new name and uh, you're going to find out what's her, what is now his name, not her name anymore. Uh, his story is very inspiring. It's going to motivate you. It's going to inspire you and you that you feel like you've come to an end of what you're going through. My guest here is here today to not only inspire you but to encourage you and to give you words that are going to give you hope since that you have lost hope. And without any more further talk, and today I don't want to talk more, I just want him to take over the show and just give us those encouraging words and tell us, tell us where he already has come from because it's not been an easy journey, it's been a journey full of ups and downs, mountains, valleys, uh, crossing bridges, crossing rivers, and today he can really uh, testify that there is a God in heaven that changes someone's life. Hi, my dear, how are you? I'm doing good, I thank God. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm so happy to see you um. and uh, to see you in a, in a, in a, in a different version. And yes. I know it's a journey. And before we continue, a lot of people maybe have seen you in other channels and yeah. maybe have seen you with a different name, just like I've said. Yes. Kindly just now introduce yourself. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, before we get to even how you became who you are today. Uh, hello, viewers. Uh, I'm Levy Blessing. I know many last left me being called Beatty. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I had promised people that I will change my name. Uh -huh. And so, because I've gone, I'm Levy Blessing and I thank God mm -hmm. for giving me another chance to live. Wow. I, I don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's God. It's God. Yeah, I think it's God. It's, you don't think, it is God. It is God. It is God. <laughs> don't use that word, think. Yes. <laughs> Today, we are celebrating the doing of the Lord, yeah. true or false. It's true. Because it's been a journey. Yeah, it Take us been through a your journey, journey. Levy. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, Levi was born in in Melo, mm -hmm. just here in Chuka, mm -hmm. and uh, he has been raised as a girl. And people have been knowing me as a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, people have not even been knowing my case. Others have been uh, seeing me as their sister. <laughs> my mom has been seeing me as her daughter, mm -hmm. but uh, it reached to a point. Mm -hmm. I do tell people mm. it leads to a point when uh, I heard that everything is not fine because Levi is not just born mm -hmm. 
is not just born a girl, is not just born a man. Mm -hmm. I'm born intersex. Mm -hmm. Simply when I talk about intersex, mm -hmm. people, people, people just mis mistaken us with the lesbians, gays. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just mistaken us in Auli. But I do tell people, lesbian, lesbianism comes with you deciding. Or maybe you underpassed something. Mm -hmm. So you are like, uh, I want to love my fellow women. Gayism comes with still you by yourself. You want it. Mm -hmm. I've underpassed this. I want to love my fellow men. Mm -hmm. But something we call intersex, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your parent. It has just to do with God, our Heavenly Father. Is the only person who has something to do with, with our situations. Intersex. And simply intersex means you're born both. You're you born have both male and female. You are you're both you're, you're male and you're female. Okay. In short, you are both dentos. Yeah. Wow. So when did you find out that you are intersex? Being born and raised, at what point did you feel you've said <coughs> it reached a point and you felt like you're not okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um I grew up like a normal girl, mm -hmm. but around, uh, around five years, mm -hmm. just start feeling. I just started feeling like, you know, it is not like, you know, you know, like these, these, this baby of young kids, you find they're just peeping to each other. Yes, at the age it, of nine, ten. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. They just peep at each other. Mm -hmm. They just stay naked and they don't worry. Mm -hmm. So I was like, eh, these people are different. So. I I, I, and I was so curious and I had to find that is it me was the problem or uh, uh, the other people mm -hmm. because now I'm, I was like ah, we are not the same mm -hmm. so is it you or is it me so you kept on asking yourself yeah so are they the other ladies whom I'm working with mm -hmm. or it's me who has the problem and on continuing and going on doing my research I found like I found out that where it's you. You're so different from them. Like you're so different. So I wanted to ask my my, my grandmother. That time I, I was not so close with my mom mm -hmm. because my mom was not allowed. Actually my mom my mom was in Moya. So I went and asked my grandmother. I asked her, like, what's what's happening? What's really happening? Mm -hmm. Because I I guess I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Why? I just told her, you know what, I've been just looking at the other girls and they are not like me. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. And I think I usually say, I think she was avoiding depression. Mm -hmm. Because she told me, you know what, you're okay my daughter. You're just fine. You're perfectly fine. I, I was like, ah, you're telling me I'm okay and I can see it clearly that I'm not fine. But she was like, no, you're okay. And we went on, we went on, and you, you usually know that uh, around class five, six, this is the place that you start, you know, studying about the productive system, you know. So I was like, hey, let me get it from here. And so, you know, I happened to see that uh, they have taught the female, the production, the productive system, they have taught the male, but <laughs> There is no place they have mentioned me. There is there's no way there is adding up about yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, where? What's this? And now, now I went back. And now I went back to my grandmother. I went back to my grandfather. That particular time my, grand, my grandmother had passed. Mm -hmm. And I was left with my, grand, my grandfather. So I went back to him and I was like, okay, you people told me I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But now. I'm on my senses. I'm not okay. Tell me what's happening. And you know, my aunt and my grandfather told me, you know what? There is a gene we call intersex. Or there are people we call intersex. They are born this and this way. And you are one of them. So, relax. It is life. And we shall know of how to help you. And I remember very well my, my mother taking me to Kenyatta National Hospital. And also Charia, a certain hospital in Meru, mm -hmm. and also Kijabe. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
it, it was not successful. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, she was told, you know what, just leave her to just reach the adolescent stage. Because we have been destroying the intersex kind by just deciding. You are a mother, you decide that you needed a girl or she looks like a girl, he looks like a man. Just go and take him or her to the, to, just the surgery is done on her. But on glowing, you just find, oh, the sign that you took him or her mm -hmm. is not the, the sign mm -hmm. he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So he was told, just leave him or just leave her to just grow the way she is. And uh, we shall just, or she'll just tell us who she is mm. and we shall help you from there. Okay. But my mom didn't go back. So at what time was, uh, what age were you at that time? I was, I was eight. Eight? Yes. Okay. That is when we went to Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. But she didn't go back again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you grew up being the Betty that you were? Yeah, I grew up being the Betty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went to a normal school. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank God that my primary school was so smooth. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I went back, to, I, I, I just learned, I, I went to primary school. It was so smooth, I could dress like a girl. Like no one who was bothered by me, you know. But now when I, when I was, was it class? Class eight, mm -hmm. yes. The, the the male the male hormone started started out doing the the, the female hormone, mm -hmm. and so I was I, I was feeling that you know, but you so much of a man I could see girls and I could see hey, this girl is beautiful you know, mm -hmm. this girl is beautiful, mm -hmm. this girl has a good shape like those things that men see. You started feeling attracted to your I started feeling, opposite sex. Yes, yeah, I started mm -hmm. feeling so much attracted to them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I was like, now wait, Betty, are you okay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can understand. Let me just uh -huh. laugh because now at least I feel. That. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, it was so funny. For like, you, it was like you're not normal. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah because you're a girl, you, are you girl? cannot be attracted to your to, female girl. No, like, hey, Betty, are you okay? Like, you know, I'm dressing like a girl, mm -hmm. but. I'm attracted to my gender. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, are you okay? There must be a problem. Mm -hmm. And so now that thing started depressing me. It started depressing me because I had nobody to talk to, talk to mm. about what I'm mm. you know. Mm. So I just uh, did my KCP. Mm -hmm. And because we were, not, we were not, totally, we were not in good terms with my mom, mm -hmm. not at all. And what was the reason? Like, you know, I usually say, and after today, and I usually tell people, mm. and I do repeat this to any media that I go, mm. I usually say this with a very big respect to this lady. Mm -hmm. But my mom hated me so much for who I was. Because she couldn't clearly say that, you know, <laughs> what's your purpose in this world? Like, what's your purpose? Your sister is a normal girl, your sister will even, make, will even give me grandchildren, but you, complicated creature. <laughs> so, so, you know, when, when I just did my KCP, it was hard to stay near her. Mm -hmm. And we did with my sister. Though I was a hand of my sister, but my sister just came up and caught up with me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, you know, you know like when I was in uh, class five, I mm -hmm. think my sister was in class three. Mm -hmm. And so because of that depression of my mom and uh, mm. whatever, very many things. And I was in, and, and I was in Gurubani primary mm -hmm. and that school is tough, my friend. Mm -hmm. There is the pass mark that if, if you don't pass, if you you don't yeah. pass and reach to that mark, mm. you won't go, mm -hmm. like you won't proceed. Mm -hmm. So I kept on failing, failing and repeating and repeating. Failing and repeating and repeating and my sister just caught up with me. Mm -hmm. So I was ashamed. You know, like, I was like, Betty, just pull up your socks. Your sister is with you now. Mm -hmm. Like, she'll just leave you, just pull up your socks. And so I, I just tried my best. It was just to 50, mm -hmm. and I could not reach to, to, to that max. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just tried my best. And we, we went to class six with my sister. We went to class seven with my sister. We went to class six. We didn't 
KCP, the same here. Mm -hmm. But my sister passed because I remember she had a B, B plus. When I think I had a D plus because I was with G to what, to mm -hmm. two or nine, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my mom, said, you know, after we, we were done, my mom just said, you know what, I will take your sister in school. I'll not take you. Just stay young at home and stay with your sisters. Because we had two, we had two younger girls. So she was like, stay here at home, stay with your sisters. So I was like, what? You're not taking me to school? Yet I'm, I'm the firstborn, I'm, uh, I'm already grown up, like, I'm just growing. Just take me to school. I was like, no. I'll take your sister, and my sister was taken to school. And she told me, you know what, just relax. That is in 2014. So she told me, just relax. I'll take you to school after. I'll take you to school at 2015. That is when my sister, where, when my sister will be informed, to, I, I'll take you to school. Mm -hmm. Well, I just went and uh, I, can, I can just recall it was, uh, it was December. And I asked, uh, now, that particular time, we could report at February. So now I was uh, like, oh, mommy told me you'll take me to school. By the way, what are your plans? She told me, who? Me. Me to take you to school. Are you okay? What am I taking you to school to help me with? Huh? What am I taking you to school to help, you with, to help me with? See yourself. So when, when, when I just, when, when uh, it just reached to a point and uh, I saw there was no hope of me going to high school, I talked to my aunt, the, the sister to my mom. Mm -hmm. And so I asked my aunt, you know what aunt, mom has just refused to take me to school, can you? She just told, she just told me now do this, eh? let me talk with my husband. If he agrees, we will take you to school. And thank God that the husband agreed. Mm -hmm. And so she talked to my mom and she told mom, you know what? <coughs> Just give me your, your daughter. I want to take her to school. And I went. So I went back to Meru. Wow. And I, I felt now, you know, my dream has started to come true mm -hmm. because now I've been taken to secondary school. Secondary school. Mm -hmm. But it, it didn't reach a point where we sat with my aunt. My aunt was my best friend, but we didn't reach to a point. Where mother, I just talked, or my aunt just sat with me, like the way we are sitting, mm -hmm. and asked me now, you know what? You are an intersex. By the way, how are you feeling about your condition? And that is what I'm, I do tell parents to any social media. When you see your child has any disability, but mine is not disability. But I, I just want to put it yeah, like yeah, that it's, yeah, it's okay. for the parent to understand. Yeah. When you see your child is on any disability, on all in any condition, don't be ashamed to ask her, you know what, you have a short leg than the other one. How are you feeling about it? Mm. Don't get ashamed to ask him or her like mm. that. You know, you, you hand, your hand is not functioning well. You're not hearing. How are you feeling about your life? You're not seeing. I've time to talk about that thing with him or her. So we didn't have time to talk with my hand. Are you trying to say even from when you realized you are intersex, nobody in the family nobody. took time to sit you down and yes. to understand what you're going through? Yes, totally nobody. Nobody. And so you, you see now I, I just lived a lonely life, a life that I don't understand myself. So, you know, my aunt was like, see, 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 I've just took you to school. Mm. You're okay. Mm. See, I'm giving you good diet. You're okay. See, I'm giving you what you want. You're okay. But she didn't know. There is something that is disturbing me, deeper inside me. So, I went to school. The, <laughs> yeah, the high school now. That is when things started. Now, you know, I was a footballer. So that is where things started, you know. She's not playing football like a normal girl. You know, she doesn't have breasts. <coughs> so they kept on talking what they, they think. But biting you behind your back. But biting me. And sometimes they could say, they could say it. And, you know, they could just come, wherever I am. But <laughs> let me just ask, Kwani, are you a man? <laughs> ask, who is it? Why? 
Why don't you have breast? Oh, you were, were you in a girl's school? No, it was mixed. It was mixed. Yes. A day school or a boarding? It was a day school. Okay. So they could ask, <laughs> why don't you have breast? Mm. I was like, hey, what's up? Why is this thing disturbing you and it is not yours? Mm -hmm. They were like, no, you know, you might be having <laughs> a man and we don't know. No, when they talk that thing. And they could tell, tell it to you right on your face? Yes. So when they just talk, I could, wah, I was like, God, if they just know they are talking the real, the real thing. So that thing did it disturb to me. Because they are talking it and it is true. So we just, I remember one day we just went to, we had a tournament in our school. Mm -hmm. And I think I just, I, I, I had really longed to, <laughs> to play football. Mm -hmm. So like I just planned it like, like really good. Mm -hmm. I scored a lot of bows mm -hmm. and they were like, where, 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 where? Hey, Betty, Betty. This game, <laughs> something yeah. is some is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I remember that day is when they told me there must be something. You are a lesbian. So you who are, is telling you this? The teachers or yeah, your fellow no, students? My fellow students. Mm -hmm. You are either a lesbian or you are an intersex. So I was like, what? No, what is really disturbing these people? So now that thing kept on disturbing me. Not only that. Now the, 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 the male hormone is still getting stronger, getting stronger, getting stronger, getting stronger. Like, you know, the more it is getting stronger, mm -hmm. the more I'm becoming like, like I'm, I'm, I'm more of a male, the more it's getting stronger. Mm -hmm. And now this thing kept really disturbing me. Mm -hmm. You know, you are attracted to girls, you are, girl, you are, you are born again Christian, like very many things. And I, I believe the same time you are still living in denial. And still I'm living in denial. So it was hard. It was totally hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really this time. I took all my time crying in school. Whenever I'm not seeing, I could hide. Whenever I, whenever I could, I could hide myself and cry so much, mm -hmm. you know. Because I was like, why God, why me? Mm -hmm. So I could cry so much. I could try to commit suicide, but it did not work because I felt um, like I'm totally, like I'm nothing, mm. you know, because not my mom, not my family, mm. it's me and me alone, mm. fighting my own depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hard. And uh, that is how I ended my, my high school education and scored a D minus. Because uh, I could not stand when I was in school. And now when I, when I was done in school, mm -hmm. life became totally miserable because I had to get out of my auntie's place mm -hmm. because now, you know, I'm already done. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm done with my form four, so mm -hmm. I have to get out. So I went, I went back to my mother's place mm -hmm. thinking I'll just find her ah, changed. And I found, no, it was as hard, as tough as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to get out and go because uh, my mom didn't want to see me. So I had to get out and, you know, go. Mm -hmm. So I went out and uh, started, like, started hustling, hustling and hustling very many places. Mm -hmm. People could employ me. Mm -hmm. But when they employ me, two days, we just fired. And it is house job. So it was miserable by them. And so how did you reach to a point of accepting yourself and now to where you are. Well, actually, let me just take you back a little bit. Yes. You starting uh, working as a house girl, you've said. Yes. W uh, were you being always fired immediately? They realized you're an intersex? Or what was the cause of you being employed and being fired? Okay. I didn't know how they, they were realizing, but yes. After they realized that I'm an inter, that I'm an intersex, mm -hmm. they they just fired me. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the first place, the very first place I was employed in Chuka. Mm -hmm. and I had to 
two 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 daughters mm -hmm. of that mother mm -hmm. and after she realized that is when she fired me after she realized you know i'm an intercessor she just told me you know what mm. i can't trust with my daughters mm -hmm. huh what so i was like <laughs> but it's okay so when did the denial get away from you and when did you accept you're an intersex uh it it just went like that mm -hmm. i kept on uh, hustling mm -hmm. and uh, you know being fired hustling mm -hmm. being fired mm -hmm. until um, last year when i felt this too much mm -hmm. men are into my inbox you know men are seeing a very beautiful lady and they're into my inbox that mm -hmm. actually that was the thing that really depressed me. Mm -hmm. You know, men are in my inbox and they are seeing a very beautiful lady. <laughs> <laughs> yet you are not. Yet I'm not. Mm -hmm. I can't even get attracted to them. Mm -hmm. But they are there. Oh, that's a bad thing. So I was like, ah, you guys, can you just leave me? Mm -hmm. Just leave me. Mm -hmm. But they're like, no. <laughs> Why should I leave you? Mm -hmm. I'm, just seeing, I'm just seeing a wife in you. <laughs> you know. Okay, then I thank God because of the heart that I was given. Mm -hmm. Actually, I thank God because like I have men, I have men, very many people who whom, whom can rely on me mm -hmm. because uh, God gave me a good heart. Mm -hmm. So whenever I talk to somebody, you just find yourself getting attracted to me. Mm -hmm. So they're like, ah, we are seeing a wife in you and you are telling us we, we go away. Mm -hmm. So it was hard mm -hmm. until uh, I have my spiritual mom called Dolkas Wamalo. Mm -hmm. So I just told her, oh, Mom, it's getting hard. Like nobody can understand me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thank God because of that woman. Mm -hmm. She really prayed apart. Mm -hmm. She could talk to me, I could cry, she could offer me a shoulder to cry on mm -hmm. because I was like, every day I was crying, crying and crying and crying. Mm -hmm. But she could not get tired of me. When I was sent out of our home, mm -hmm. I knew. You had a home to go. To. I had a home to go. And after today, I can just get out of this place of mine and go. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. stay with her mm -hmm. and come back. Mm -hmm. So, she just talked to me. Mm -hmm. She had no money, but she just decided to just pay a counseling session, mm -hmm. two of them. Mm -hmm. And when I went, I felt, wow, it's like I'm healing. Mm -hmm. And you know, do you know, Mother, I just gathered that courage and turned into my Facebook page and told them, you know what? Mm. You people have been following my back. Others have been uh, just asking me and uh, asking me for my intersex. They have been guessing. Mm -hmm. Now, today is from the horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. I'm an intersex. And I don't date men, so can you keep away from me? Mm -hmm. They were like, hey, wait a minute. What are you talking about? You know, people got astonished. Like you're getting now. I can imagine. I've been living you like my. I've been living with you like my sister. Mm. Hey, you're getting now, and uh, I started even losing friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank God because uh, there's a. I like. I felt like it's a, it's a very big band and I've gotten out of my mm. body. Mm. But I lost very many people. Mm. That is last year, and that is when things started going right. Mm -hmm. So I had to still fight with it. Mm -hmm. And I came out, I had a friend of mine who invited me to an interview. Mm -hmm. You know, she just called me and she was like, okay, can you talk about this? Mm -hmm. Now you have ended it, can you talk about it? And I was like, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, after talking about it, I thank God because I thank God because people really responded, mm -hmm. and people were willing to help me. Mm -hmm. So I had a family from Canada, the other one from UK, mm -hmm. and uh, they were really willing to help me, and they stood with me. Mm -hmm. They took me to counseling, which took more than a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. but they just because they took me to the counseling, they took me to the counseling session in Nairobi. I started healing. They could cater for my bills. Mm -hmm. They could pay my house rent. They could send me money, do shopping when they were there, pay the counseling session, and the way it was, it was, and the way it was expensive. Mm. They could pay it, and they were just asking for receipt, and I could just send them mm. the receipt. Mm. They could buy 
and a friend of mine I had given them uh, a number from the shop they couldn't buy things I was just gone and come pick the things. come the pick the things mm. they couldn't pay the house rent mm -hmm. because they earned the landlord's number and they stole with me mm -hmm. for, for more than three months mm -hmm. and I healed I went for I was turned to undergo 15 casting session mm -hmm. but I went 10 of them mm -hmm. but I really healed mm -hmm. I healed completely and uh, I thank God for them even if they just left me they really left a mark of their life in me was that your turning point from Betty to Levy yes and that was my turning point because I went to the hospital mm -hmm. it was not just about counseling you know mm -hmm. because you don't just wake up and tell us you know you are a man yeah you don't just wake up and tell us you are a woman mm. there is the test very expensive test mm -hmm. that you are dango mm. uh, they will help you no then there is still medication that you are dango now you you just go take the test mm -hmm. when the test portrays you as a man mm. you are given injections and medication then they help you boost your male hormone when the test portrays you as a woman the same so I, went, I, I underwent the test, I was uh, given medication mm -hmm. and I started undergoing counseling session. Mm -hmm. I was taught how to relate with men because I'm a man now and mm -hmm. I've been used to staying with ladies. Mm -hmm. I was taught how to relate with men, mm -hmm. stay with men mm -hmm. and uh, my company became of men and I talk like a man. Wow, <laughs> yeah. wow, wow, wow. And that was my turning point. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that is, I think, that is where everything mm -hmm. turned around. Mm -hmm. And I felt I'm completely healed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, they just decided, now because I'm healed, mm -hmm. let my story be to inspire people. Wow, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so encouraged by you and I'm so happy about you. Even seeing you dressed like a male person, it's an <laughs> honor, I feel so proud. Uh, I know there are so many intersex out yes. there. Yes. And they feel like they've lost hope life has come to an end they feel sometimes used by yes. people yes. what would you tell them and by the way do we even have an intersex organization in kenya yeah there is mm -hmm. there is the jinsiangu mm -hmm. there is the lpck mm -hmm. there are those two organizations mm -hmm. yes what would you tell the intersex people out there that they feel that life has come to an end for them <laughs> one thing i do tell them and i will tell them one thing that uh, the lady who was counseling me told me mm. You have your own life. And people will talk and at night they will sleep. Mm -hmm. That is what I realized to accept myself. Mm -hmm. Hey, but people are just talking here and have big mouths during the day, but at night they will sleep. Mm -hmm. But you, you just, like, you just carry all those things. At night you are there. How are these people seeing me? You, you deny yourself. Now, you have your life to live. Mm. Even the Bible itself says you have your life to live, but live to please who? God. Live to please God. He is not human being. So when I learned that my life is just to please God, not human being, mm. I just left everything to people and knew I'm me. Like now, because I was in my house. I was with who in my house? Alone. I was alone in my house. Yes, because it is me and my God, not me and my sister, not wow. me and my mom. Wow. And not me and my family members, or not me and my friends. It's me and me alone. Very true. When you just know that, mm. you'll focus on what brought you to this world. And to please God. And to please God. I think I, I, I really appreciate those words that you've said you live to please God, not to please yeah. men. Just live to please God. Now currently that you live, what are you doing? Maybe people would want now to employ you. Someone would want to reach out to you and just get to know. I'm also facing this <laughs> levy. How would you help me? <laughs> okay, for now I don't have, I don't have, I'm just hustling like a normal Kenyan. Uh -huh. I don't have... You're a hustler, in other words. I'm a hustler, <laughs> in other words. Uh -huh. I don't have that business that I'm saying, you know, this is the business that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just hustling. Mm -hmm. I can do anything mm -hmm. as long as it will help me sustain and pay my bills mm -hmm. because 
In Nairobi, everything is about yeah, money. It's about money. It's about money. That's the life, the kind of you, life you're living yes, today. Whatever you wear, whatever you eat, mm -hmm. what you are, your house, mm -hmm. it's money. Mm -hmm. So I just hustle. Mm -hmm. I don't have any place that I am saying that, you know, mm -hmm. this is the place that I'm working for. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So. And I can't do anything oh. apart from house help. Uh -huh. The other jobs I can do. You can do? Yeah. Okay. Apart from house help. Uh, the other job I can the other jobs I can do. Uh -huh. As long as they help me to get a job. Apart from house help and bus. I had forgotten bus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't work in bus. <laughs> I don't I don't really work in bus uh -huh. because I'm a Christian uh -huh. and we have said let's live to please God. Yeah. By taking beer we are not pleasing God. We're yeah. just destroying this young generation. So I don't work there. Uh -huh. So I can do any any, any job, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So if a person has any job there, you can just talk to me. Mm -hmm. If you just need an employee, mm -hmm. you can just talk mm -hmm. talk to me. If it's favorable, we can work. Okay. Before yeah. we wind up, maybe before we wind, do you have any parting shots to our viewer? Any message that you want to tell them? Uh, no, mm -hmm. like okay. Well, I, I can just I can just tell them uh, mm. thank you for embracing us. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Kenya, we have reached to a point that at least at least has the community embraced the intersex now in Kenya. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have reached to a point that the community has started embracing us, mm -hmm. and I thank God for that. Wow! You know, there before you could not mention intersex, mm -hmm. and there I don't want I don't want to mention the community, but there are some communities even today. <laughs> The intersex are not uh, the, the intersex are not mentioned there. Mm -hmm. Actually, the midwife will not even let the mother see the child. They will just kill the child. Just when the child is born, they just kill the child. And that is so bad. Yeah. And the midwife so will not even let the mother see the child mm. just because mm. she's an intersex. So I just love them mm -hmm. that they have started the blessing us. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a taboo to mention. Mm. They have started embracing us, mm. half my friends, mm -hmm. we even have families. Mm -hmm. And they're intersex? <laughs> yes. Wow. They have families, mm -hmm. they have good wives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just to motivate us. Mm -hmm. They have just started embracing us mm -hmm. and let them just continue doing that. Wow. They have just started embracing us at least. Mm -hmm. They are embracing us. They will not just say, you know, you know they, they, it's not like there before you know somebody will be like you know like now where i am today mm. even if somebody just finds me with somebody's daughter there mm. she will not just keep there on judging mm. but long before you could just hear them saying you know she's an she's a lesbian mm. but thank god because now they are not judging our communities have started looking things from the root they want to know why are these people together mm. And I thank God because I'm looking forward, and I usually tell people I'm looking forward to one day have a really great family to inspire people. Yeah. Oh, I'm so proud, and I wish you the very best, Levi. Thank and you. thank you also for coming out and not even talking to the parents who, anytime maybe they, uh, they bore children with disabilities that you have said, uh, they trouble. try like uh, regarding them like outcasts. Uh, you know, it's very good that you've also talked to parents because you underwent that through, uh, through your parents and uh, it cost you a lot because I could see even when you were talking how hurtful you were because <laughs> if at all she would have just embraced you at a young age, all this would not have led to you getting into depression, yeah, it feeling it hated by the community, yeah. even coming to just live on your own. Sure. Yeah. So I'm so happy so much yeah. and I wish you the very best. And to my viewer, you've heard, now she's no longer Betty, she is Levy and uh, she's a hustler. So if you're there, you can employ her, you can give her a, a good job. She's ready to, he is ready to take in the job. And before I wind up, let us him give us his number. Uh-huh. Uh, yep, I have my... WhatsApp number, uh -huh. uh, but I usually tell people when I give you my number, please let's just talk something sensible. I've been giving out my number to media and what I've been seeing. Mm -hmm. wait, 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 wait. People, you better warn them here before yeah. when you give them. <laughs> yeah, I usually tell them uh -huh. when I give my number, mm. let's just talk business, whatever I've talked here. Mm. 
that is all I can talk about. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk business. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk how we can help the intersex children mm -hmm. because I'm looking forward. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to to just see the intersex children mm -hmm. having a bright future. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I have a YouTube channel. Kindly share it. So it has not started to run. I have, uh, I've not gotten the gadget that I need. I don't have a good phone, but uh, I'm trusting God for the best Amen. before before maybe the end of this year. Amen. It will have started learning mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I usually say my father has everything. Amen. I just need to ask. So it will start learning. So I have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's Intersex Chronicles with Betty. Mm -hmm. Just go there, subscribe. Videos will start learning soon. I'll bring to you my friends. I have very many intersex friends. Mm -hmm. I'll bring to you to you them there. Mm -hmm. So go there, subscribe. Intersex Chronicles with Betty. Mm -hmm. My number, and please, oh yeah, kindly. <laughs> Let's talk something sensible. My number, my WhatsApp number, and still you can call is 0740-192-641. 0740-192-641. I think that's all. Ah, thank you so much, Levi. And we wish you the very best. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you prosper. And uh, being a leader or a motivational speaker to the intersex and to every other community that God will lead you. That's my prayer for you. And thank you so much for honoring our invitation I'm and also uh, honoring, uh, giving us this amazing space in your house. We thank you so much. I don't take it for granted. And I wish you the very best in, in whatever you do, in wherever you go. Thank you so much, my viewer, for always tuning in, for always commenting, subscribing, and reaching out to us. I'm sure uh, Levi's story has inspired you. And please, just like she has said, I still emphasize, please don't take that number and try to misuse it. Kindly, kindly. She has also, he has also insisted on that. So please, let's respect his decision and let's be here to encourage and also inspire the rest of the community that we meet there outside. That's all for today. Thank you always. Thank you, thank you always for tuning in. Com continue subscribing commenting liking and don't forget to press that notification bell so that every time i upload my video you'll be notified until next time shalom and god bless you let's preach